Hey, what's happening? Boss is Los. Just had the opportunity to spend a couple hours out today taking some pictures. If anybody thinks I like sitting behind this table, they are smoking crack. Um, I like being helpful, but I mean, I like to be out taking pictures. Um, let's talk about something that uh, people have a big misunderstanding about. And it's mostly due to a couple people on YouTube. Really popular people on YouTube. Um, let's see, words like leprechauns, unicorn farts, nonsense, twaddle, DX lenses, and FX lenses. Okay? The notion that you have an issue with the full frame lenses on DX crop sensors. I, there's one particular video out there, and everybody keeps referencing it, and it is so flat wrong. It's unbelievably wrong. Nikon does not make many DX crop sensor lenses. They only make four that I'd recommend. Here are two of them, 35mm 1.8G, the 17-55 to 2.8, which is basically the equivalent, or the same equivalent, of the 24-70 to 2.8. It goes a little bit further than 70mm, but that's the equivalent. Um, there's a popular video out there, and people keep mentioning it to me. What about using full-frame lenses on DX crop sensors? Is that an issue? Not only is it not an issue, there are several advantages to using the uh, full-frame lenses on DX crop sensors. You kind of know how uh, your mama used to make you sandwiches, at least not in my case anyway. <laughs> and she'd uh, trim the uh, crust around the edge of the bread. Same wonderful little premise of using full-frame lenses on a DX crop sensor. The circle of projection in every lens is a projection circle. You know, the DX and full-frame sensors, which are rectangles, now you're, you're, no lens out there shoots out a, uh, you know, a rectangular. They're all circles of projection. Um, you're trimming off the worst of any lens. Every lens has vignetting. To what degree that vignetting occurs at relative to the DX crop sensor, the full-frame crop sensor, obviously, is you know, a matter of testing. And every lens, as is the case, shows what it truly is when it lifts its skirt at its uh, fullest aperture. This lens will show itself in its true form at 1.8. This is a 5.6, a constant, 200mm to 500mm. This is a full-frame lens. It will show you its worst at 5.6. And its worst is not bad at all. It's extremely good. Um, if you have a crummy full-frame lens which has bad vignetting issues, we give you a decent lens that has bad vignetting issues, then you've chopped all that off on a DX crop sensor. The, this video it causes me consternation, consternation and irritation in that it's unbelievable that uh, people have uh, bought into this. And, uh, you know, it's absolutely palpably incorrect. There is only one issue, and one issue only, in purchasing full-frame lenses. Here's another fact. You know, this lens, by the way, if you buy it new, it's a DX crop sensor lens. It's $1,500. Um, there's a huge misnomer out there that uh, DX lenses uh, cost less than full-frame lenses. Really, they don't. They don't. Nikon does not, in the scheme of things, make that many DX crop sensor lenses. They, they don't. Um, there are only four DX lenses that I could even recommend. Um, the other is the uh, 12 to 24 and the 10.5 millimeter fisheye. So only four DX lenses that I could recommend. Every professional bird shooter out there is using, by the way, uh -uh, due to pixel pitch, because there's more translational information per square millimeter of sensor, this scaled up, this uh, Nikon D500, which is 20.8 megapixel sensor, if it were scaled up, would be at the same pixel pitch, if it were a full frame sensor, would be 47 megapixels. Every professional bird shooter out there is using full frame lenses on... I get asked this question quite a bit recently. People are like, well, how do you, you know, is that lens okay on a DX uh, camera? It's like, not only is it okay, it is best on a DX crop sensor camera. Why, how does that make any sense? Why is a full-frame lens better on a DX crop sensor? Well, let's just take birding, for example. You might, be, might not be a bird shooter, and I'm not really a bird sh I mean, I like shooting birds, but not really a, you know, a serious uh, bird photographer. It is a lot of fun to do, but A, you've got the fact that the vignetting has been removed. But most importantly, due to the pixel pitch on basically every DX crop sensor camera, since bird shooters crop the hell out of their images, you have more information there if you crop the hell out of the shot. 
you know, you got some little freckle best a freckle-breasted woodpecker at a thousand yards. Even with this lens, you know, the bird occupies about that much space on the DX crop sensor. Now, cropping that out of any full-frame uh, camera, even the very best, there's just not that much information. The circle of projection, this lens, by the way, and nobody seems to understand this fact, this lens will crap out the exact same light irrespective of what size sensor is underneath it. It has no idea, nor does it give a damn, what size sensor is underneath it. This lens and every lens on Earth, regardless of who made it, will dump the same light regardless of what the hell is sitting underneath it. It doesn't know and it doesn't care. The only issue with full frame lenses, the really fast ones, is this. This is the circle of projection. This is not exactly to scale. This is the circle of projection of a full frame lens. And let's say this is a DX crop sensor. What you are doing, like I said, really, it is the case that uh, full frame lenses are not really, you know, this is $1,500. That's not a cheap lens. You know how much a full frame uh, 24-70 2.8 lens costs, which is the equivalent of this? Well, used, well, new, it's $1,900, basically. Okay, it's $500 more than this lens. Used, I can grab one for $1,000, $900 all day long. So really and truly, full-frame lenses are not more expensive. If you buy them new, uh, you know, this one compared to the 24-70, yeah, it's $500 or more. What you're doing is you're paying for all this real estate, the circle of projection from the lens, that is not being used by the crop sensor. That's the only issue, and that isn't an issue at all. What you have over here, by the way, depending on the lens, is vignetting. Okay, no big deal. You certainly don't have any issues of vignetting using a full-frame uh, image circle of projection from a full-frame lens and a DX crop sensor, because the vignetting is way the hell out here. Every lens projects a circle of light. So the only issue you have is, for example, if I stick... But Nikon doesn't make a lens like that. If there were a full-frame version of the 17-55, to which there isn't, then you would be paying for all this real estate out here that you're not actually using. It's kind of like renting a gigantic office space, which costs, you know, some serious money, but you're only using about, you know, 45% of it. Same premise. But like I said, you know, this lens used, by the way, is 600 550 all day long. Not that expensive. This is a really good lens. It's 17 to 55, which is a DX crop sensor lens, which is on a DX camera right now. The Nikon D500. So this poppycock, this this uh, this this pile of unicorn farts and nonsense and twaddle, you know, that's being promulgated by a couple of YouTube people that you should not use uh, DX lenses on. You know, why don't you tell that to 99% of professional bird photographers that are all using... There is, by the way, <coughs> excuse me, all of these big, fast, uh, or uh, gigantic uh, focal length lenses used by bird they're all full-frame lenses. There ain't any DX crop sensor enormous telephoto lenses. They're all full-frame lenses. Nikon is not heavily invested at all into making DX crop sensor lenses. The reason being is that full-frame lenses work perfectly on your DX camera. Do you have an issue with the relative crop factor? Like if you stick to 24 to 70 on this camera, you have to multiply the 24 to 70 by 1.5 and so you have this freaky focal range that's not 24 to 70 but it's uh, what uh, 24 and 36 to uh, uh, 36 to 1, I think it's 36 to 105 so that's kind of freaky focal range when you stick a 24, but is it, is it an issue? Not really, no. I mean, it's just a freaky focal range, relatively, and the crop factor that's applied to the circle of projection. Like I said, every lens dumps the same light. Any notion that uh, that sticking full-frame lenses on a DX crop sensor body is an issue with depth of field, this is also the BS in that other video, and it is some serious hardcore BS. The depth of field does not change when I stick this big lens, for example, one example out of every example, between a full-frame camera and a DX crop sensor. The relative seeming depth of field and the perspective will change, but the depth of field does not change. Field of view is not depth of field. FOV is not DOF. Depth of field is not field of view. The only thing that changes is a crop. The, field, uh, the depth of field is a constant. The depth of field of the circle of projection of light that drops out of this lens or any full frame lens is exactly the same. This lens does not change one damn thing if I stick it on a full frame body as opposed to me sticking it on a crop sensor body. Nothing changes regarding this lens or what it emits. 
Nothing. The only thing that happens is the circle of projection is cropped. Nothing changes. That is a stupid... I mean, that idea in this video by one of the, you know, oh my god. That idea is as stupid as saying that if I go over here to my window, and if I crop out uh, the window smaller, like I put a mask around my window, that like the outside world is going to change. I mean, how stupid is that? That is, is in essence what that idiotic video states. I mean, how dumb is that? You know that's, you know, incredibly ignorant. Well, you know, if I put a mask around my window, the outside world is going to change. No, it's not. All you've done is crop off the uh, projection of illumination that passes through that window. Anyway, so this nonsense about using, uh, not using full frame lenses on uh, DX crop bodies is a pile of poo. It, it, it's just it's nonsense. And the people that make these videos are idiots. Bam! Idiots. Truly, they're idiots. So... Thanks. Okay? <laughs> I hope I clarified that. Thanks.